Aren't you grateful for what Jesus did for you this morning? Come on, let's put our hands together. Let's give him praise.
Yes, we praise your holy name, Father. The name above every name. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. Oh, we worship you this morning, God. We give you our praise, Jesus. Spirit was moving over the 
that is our heart's cry this morning. You're all we want, Lord. Come and have your way in this place. Come and do what only you can do, Lord. Come and have your way, Holy Spirit, oh. Come and have your way, have your way. Won't you lift up your hands this morning? Oh, come and burn.
time. You will always be. You will always be. Come on, he's holy. He's a holy God. Whew. Do you know that you just joined with all of heaven in singing holy forever? Revelation chapter 4 says day and night. They never stop saying holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was, who is, and who is to come. That song was sung long before you breathe your first breath and will continue to be sung way after you breathe your last. It's not a song about us, it's about our God, about the power of His name, about the strength of our God. So won't you take a minute right now and magnify the Lord with me? Won't you exalt His holy name? Won't you give Him all the praise you can? We love you, Jesus. You are holy, Lord. We magnify you. We exalt you. It is not about us, Lord. It is all about you. you you deserve all our glory. You deserve all the praise. Come on, CFC. Give him the praise he deserves. Give him the worship that he deserves. We love you, Lord. He's a holy God. He's a holy God. Can we give King Jesus one last shout of praise? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Well, welcome to church, everybody. On behalf of Apostle Theo and Dr. Beverly Vomerantz, I want to say welcome home. Welcome to church. We're so pumped that you're with us here today. Whether you're here in the main auditorium or on the other side of that camera, in the family room, in the mother's room, and online, you're just as much a part of this service as everybody is. Can we greet all our online guests, everybody that's watching online? Hello. We'd love to have you in the building. Got some other very special people in the house and they are people that are here for the very first time. If you had Christian Family Church for the first time ever, could you raise your hand? We would just like to greet you. Come on, CFC, let's make them feel welcome. Let's make them feel welcome. We're so excited to have you. I see hands going up everywhere. Please keep your hand raised until one of our dream teamers can get to you a worship guide. This very worship guide is what we use to tell you a little bit about our church, who we are, what we believe, and how you can get connected. We're so excited to have you with us directly after the service. If you're here for the very first time, please don't leave. Go straight out into the mall to our welcome center where we've got a pastor there who's ready to meet you with a cup of coffee and a smile. Can we make some noise for our first timers again? Praise the Lord. Well, before we continue with the service, uh, it was someone's very special birthday the other day. It was Apostle Theo's birthday just yesterday. Hey, can we wish our senior pastor, our dad, Apostle Theo, a happy birthday? Come on, on three. One, two, three. Happy birthday, Apostle Theo. We love you, Dad. Thank you for everything that you do for us. Thank you for leading well. Thank you for being a great example to us on how to love Jesus, how to love our families, and how to live our lives. Can we make some noise for our senior pastor one more time? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, you can high-five your neighbor. Let them know you are so pumped to have them in church today, and you may be seated. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. If you haven't already, you can go ahead and check in. Just pull out your uh, cell phone and go to the Church Center app and just check in for us. As you know, it helps us pastor you better. It is my honor and my privilege to encourage us all in our giving today and, in, and encourage you in supporting the vision of God here at Christian Family Church. I'd like to speak to you a little bit today about investing in Jesus' ministry and the great rewards that this will bring us. Luke chapter 5 verse 1 it says one day as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the Word of God he noticed two empty boats at the water's edge for the fishermen had left them there and were washing their nets stepping into one of the boats Jesus asked Simon its owner to push it out into the water so he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. Can you imagine the Lord just hopping in your Corolla, 
Come on, somebody hopping in your Ford Ranger. Who's got faith? Hopping in your Range Rover <laughs> and preaching the gospel. And you can notice this, that Peter was using his fishing business to support the ministry of Jesus. You see, when you sow your finances into the offering today, you will be doing the same. You will also be investing in the ministry of Jesus. So let's see what happened. In verse 4, it says, When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch many fish. Notice that Peter did not have to ask Jesus to bless his fishing business. Because Peter had already sowed into Jesus' ministry, Jesus automatically blessed Peter's business. Because Galatians 6 verse 7 says, Whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. So let's see what Jesus said in Luke 6, 38 as well in the NLT. He said, if you give, you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full measure, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more and running over. What, whatever measure you use in giving, large or small, will be used to measure what is given back to you. So what happened next? Let's see in verse 5. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all night and didn't catch a thing. And I feel like that might be maybe some of you here today. You've done everything you can. You made the website. You've printed new business cards. You've gone onto social media to try and advertise. You've done everything you can, but you still have not caught a single fish. But this is what he said. But if you say so, if God says so, if Jesus says so, We'll try again. Verse 6 says, And this time their nets were so full they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in, in the other boat, and soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. I speak that over you this morning, that your boats will be so full that you'll have to bring people to contain the blessing. It says when Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, Oh Lord, please leave me. I am too much of a sinner to be around you. For Peter was awestruck by the size of their catch, as were the others that were with him. His partners James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. Jesus replied to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. And as soon as they landed, they left everything and they followed Jesus. You see, these men were professional, hardened fishermen. They were clearly in shock because of this miracle. Their actions tell us that what they saw was supernatural. This was a supernatural blessing on Peter's fishing business. Perhaps you need a supernatural blessing on your business here today, on your finances perhaps. Well, this is our opportunity to give into Jesus' ministry. So let's give generously and we will receive generously from God because Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do you believe that? If we expect God to bless us like he blessed Peter's fishing business, he will do it because our God is extravagant and he would love to do the same and bless all of us for our faithfulness. So won't you lift up your right hand and say this with me? Say, Jesus loves me. Sorry, say, Jesus loves me. Jesus will not do more for Peter than he is willing to do for me. Say, as I sow my financial seed into the ministry of Jesus today, I believe Jesus will abundantly, come on, supernaturally, bless me with great financial harvest. Do you believe that? Come on, give him praise in this house. Praise the Lord. Well, there's various ways that you can give. They are on the screen behind me and on the screen in front of me. You can scan the Zappa code or perhaps you can go to reception directly after the service. We've got some dream teamers there who would love to serve you with credit card facilities. The bags will also be coming through or perhaps right after the end of the service, you can go out to our exits where we've got some giving drop boxes and you can drop your giving off in there. Remember as well today, we've got Dr. Steve Barry in the house, everybody. 
And uh, we would love to be a blessing to Dr. Steve and his ministry. So won't you consider giving in to his ministry today by just marking on your envelope or perhaps even in Zappa for Dr. Steve. And we'll make sure that your giving is allocated correctly. Well, hold your seed in your hand. Hold your offering, your tithes in your hand. Let me pray over it this morning. Dear Father in heaven, we bring these tithes and offerings to you today. We worship you with them and we dedicate this money to your service and to the extension of your kingdom. We know that you receive this sacrifice of our worship at this time and you bless all of us for our faithfulness to you. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And all the prosperous people say, Amen. Amen. Well, Dream Team, as you can serve the congregation, and as you do, everything you need to know is in church news. Check this out. Church, my name is Elaine and I serve in the events team right here at church. We're so grateful to have you with us in church today. Before we get into an awesome message by Dr. Steve Perry, let me keep you up to date with all that is going on this week in our church. We believe that God gave every one of us unique gifts and talents to fulfill the specific purpose that He created us for. And if you want to learn more about the gifts that He's given you, join us today for step two of the CFC Growth Track. The Growth Track is our monthly four-step process that is designed to help you take next steps in your relationship with God and reach your full potential. At the second step of Growth Track, you will get to take a personality profile and spiritual gift assessment. Then, we'll be able to uncover how your unique design can point you towards your purpose. We'll be running step two of the CFC Growth Track in person today, and there is no need to register. Simply meet us after the first and second service at the Growth Track venue. Growth Track is completely free and you can start at any of the four steps. If you're doing Growth Track today, our amazing dream team will take care of your children at Children's Ministry until Growth Track is finished. See you there! Hey moms and dads, we would love to celebrate your little one and pray over them as they grow up and become all that God has called them to be. If you would like to dedicate your baby to the Lord, our next baby dedication is happening in the main auditorium on Sunday the 21st of April during our second service. To register your little one, you can either register via the Church Centre app in the Events tab or just email babydedication at cfcsa.co.za. Registrations close soon and if you're a member of CFC, you can register to receive a special gift to your child at the dedication with love from all of us here at CFC. We can't wait to celebrate this special day with you and your family. You know, some people won't budge when it comes to the checking in process. It's almost as if they're on a spiritual quest to avoid the process altogether. Thank you very much. You see, they're like ninjas, very sneaky, very elusive, trying to avoid the chicken station at all costs. <laughs> oh, and then we have the Eye of Chicken crew. You know who you are. Good morning, sir. May I help you check in? Check in? Oh, no, I've already checked in. Can you please show me the chicken huh? Church. Church. Yeah, then. On your phone. Oh. Huh? See what I mean? When it's time for them to present the proof that they have checked in, guess what? Look, they're gone! Oh, and then there's the classic, my spouse checked me in. No, I asked you to check us in in the no, car. No, love, but you always check us in. I know, but I always, I asked you to please check us in. But I gave you always the phone to check us in. Hi, hello. Morning. Morning. Hi. I can actually help you check in. Can I show you? Please, please. All right, so if you go onto the Church Centre app, Okay, click church in person. Please select your name and your husband's name. Okay, just need to make sure that it's the right to know it's me. It's and Ignat. Oh, perfect, you're okay. 
Sweet, thank you so much. That's how you do it. Sir, please check in. I need you to check in for the service. I'm not checking in. So it will just take a minute of your time. I will not be checking in. Okay, now guys, check on a serious check note, check checking in on the Church Center app or in person when you hear a church helps us pastor you better. So please, we can avoid any Sunday morning sitcoms. We are family. <laughs> the people that, that weren't clapping were the, were the culprits. <laughs> They're like, you know what? That guy looks eerily sim similar and familiar to me. Hey, help us, please, church. Again, we use the Church Center app to best pastor you. So we're not trying to be difficult. We're just trying to make sure that we know that you're here. And if anything ever were to happen to you, that our information is updated and up to date for you, okay? So we will be making another video where we'll have actual people there. So if you don't want to be in the video, hey, be friendly, be kind, and just help us out. Amen? Well, I got a treat for you this morning all the way from the USA. Won't you stand? Help me welcome son of the house and a gift to the body of Christ, Dr. Steve Barry, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, CFC. It's wonderful Jill and I are so uh, happy to be here with you today. We, uh, we both grew up not far from here in Edenvale, Eden Glen, and we, uh, we love Apostle Theo and Dr. Bev dearly. Uh, I got saved at this church when I was 16 years old, 1980, 44 years ago. And uh, it's wonderful to see Apostle Theo and Dr. Bev. They're just as youthful as ever. They're just as busy as ever. They're a real inspiration to us. So let's pray and get right into God's Word. Are you ready? Father, we thank you today that you are the God of the breakthrough. And you want to visit our house. And I thank you, Lord, for all the breakthroughs going to take place in people's lives. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, the God of the breakthrough wants to visit your house. That's what I want to speak to you about today. In Psalm 79, verse 9, the Passion, the Passion Translation says this, Our hero, come and rescue us, O God of the breakthrough, for the glory of your name, come and help us. One of the names of our God is the God of the breakthrough. And the, the dictionary defines a breakthrough is to have a sudden uh, a burst of God's favor. It's, it's, it's like an explosion of God's goodness. The dictionary said it is to make a sudden advance through an obstacle, things that have been holding you back. And you know, I was praying about six, seven weeks ago, and the Lord spoke to me, said, he told me, he said, Steve, I want to bring breakthroughs to my people. God wants to visit your house and bring breakthroughs in your life. Is there anybody here that needs to see a breakthrough in your life? Just wave your hand at me. Well, I'm talking, this is for you today. Say, this is for me. One time, David, in the Bible, he needed a breakthrough. He was facing an impossible situation. He had just been anointed as king over Israel and when the Philistines heard about it, they gathered their whole army together and they came to capture David. And David and his men, they were greatly outnumbered. I mean, they had no chance of winning. So David went to the Lord and he asked the Lord for help. And God said to him that he should go, that he would be with him, and he would give them a victory. And that's exactly what happened. David and his men went out, and they had an amazing victory. And David was so overwhelmed, he said in 1 Chronicles 14, verse 11, he says, God has broken through my enemies by my hand like a breakthrough of water. Therefore, they called the name of that place baal Perism. Now, the name Baal Perism literally translated means the God of the breakthrough. 
In fact, if you read it in the Amplified Version, that's what it says. It says, God has broken through my enemies like the bursting forth of water. Therefore, they called the name of that place Baal-perazim, which the Lord of the breakthrough. That's what it literally means. In, in the message translation says, God exploded my enemies like water explodes from a burst pipe. So David likened God's power to the bursting forth of waters. In other words, he described it like a flood. He was saying when the God of the breakthrough shows up and releases his power, it'll be like a flood of his goodness, a flood of his favor, a flood of prosperity, a flood of opportunity. Think about how powerful a flood is. We've had floods in the United States where you see houses being washed away along the, the river. I mean, nothing can stand in the, in the way of the power of that water. Anything in its way, any obstacle is moved out of its way. And I want you to know that you might be facing some difficulties in your life that look extremely large. But when the God of the breakthrough shows up and he releases his power, there is nothing that can stand in his way. And I want you to get ready. Tell your neighbor, get ready, not for a trickle, not for a stream, not for a river. Get ready for a flood of God's favor, a tidal wave of God's goodness, a tsunami of God's increase in your life. Amen. See, some of us, we, we think in trickle when God has a whole ocean that he wants to work with. Some of us are thinking stream when God has a tidal wave. I want to encourage you today to enlarge your vision, to stretch your faith, and to believe God for bigger things, to believe God for the impossible, because God wants to overwhelm you with his goodness. In Isaiah 59, verse 19, a scripture you probably are familiar with, it says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, comma, that's how it reads in, 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 in most Bibles, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. But I would submit to you that the comma's in the wrong place. Because, because when, the, when the Bible was translated from Hebrew and Greek to English, th there, there were no chapters or verses or punctuation. All those things were added at the discretion of the translators. I'm not changing God's word. I believe this is the way it should be. When the enemy comes in, comma, like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. In other words, the emphasis on the flood has got to do with God's power and not the enemy's power. So when you face difficulties, impossible situations, if you will stay in faith, the God of the breakthrough says, like a flood, you're going to see my power. Like a flood, you're going to see my vindication. Like a flood, the favor of God is going to overtake you. That's what happened to David when he defeated that Philistine army. And he was so impressed that he changed the name of the place to the God of the breakthrough. So anytime David or any of his men would pass by that place, they'd say, oh, remember. Remember, that's when God gave us that amazing breakthrough. And anytime David's descendants, his children, his grandchildren, when they would pass by, they'd say, we remember. Our granddaddy told us about the great breakthrough that God gave him. Let me tell you, all of us should have some ball parisms in our life. All of us should have some times where we look back and we say, remember when the Lord released his favor in my life. Remember when God healed me. Remember when God delivered me. Remember when God provided for me. Remember when the God of, my, of the breakthrough visited my house. There's a country song. I don't know if you're familiar with it. It said, let's give them something to talk about. Let's give them something to talk about. A little something to figure out. Let me tell you, God wants to give you something to talk about. He wants to give you some barbarisms in your life. He wants to give you breakthroughs in your life. Can you say amen, somebody? Amen. You know, sometimes it seems dark in our life. But David said in Psalm 112, in verse 4, when the darkness overtakes the godly, the light will come bursting in. The light will come bursting in. Amen. Now, I want to share with you a few little keys to see breakthrough in your life. Six things I want to share with you that will help you to see breakthrough. 
Number one, you've got to trust God for breakthroughs. Say, trust God for breakthroughs. In Psalm 31, verse 24, David said, so cheer up. Tell your neighbor, cheer up. Take courage, all you who love him. Wait for him to break through for you, all you who trust in him. You've got to trust God for breakthroughs. You've got to use your faith and believe God for breakthroughs. And don't look to people. Look to God. The Bible says in Psalm 118, David again writing in verse 5, he said, Out of my deep anguish and my pain, I prayed. And God, you helped me as a father. That's a great, I could preach a whole message right there on God wants to help you like a father. You may not have had a great father. I was very blessed to have a great father. He would do anything for me. And I want to tell you, you have a heavenly father. He wants, he'll do anything for you. David said, you helped me like a father. You came to my rescue and you broke open the way. He's talking about breakthrough. You broke open the way into a beautiful and a broad place. Now I know, Lord, you are for me. Say, God, you're for me. And I will never fear what man can do to me. Let me tell you, if God is for you, it doesn't matter who's against you. For you stand beside me as my hero who rescues me. I've seen with my own eyes the defeat of my enemies. I've triumphed over them all. For you stand beside me as my hero who rescues me. Lord, it is so much better to trust in you to save me than to put my confidence in someone else. It is much better to trust in the Lord to save me than to put my confidence in celebrities. Let me tell you, you've got to trust God that he visits your house with a breakthrough. There is nothing too difficult for him. There is nothing too hard for him. God wants to give you breakthroughs more than you want to receive them. Amen. Secondly, I encourage you to pray and ask God to give you breakthrough. David, you know, after David saw that first amazing breakthrough at Balpirism, after that, he would often pray and ask God for breakthrough. And uh, uh, in James 4 verse 2, it says, the reason you don't have what you want is you don't ask God for it. Very often, the reason we don't see breakthrough in our life is we don't ask God. Ask God to give you breakthroughs. Number three, expect breakthrough. Live breakthrough-minded. In Psalm 43, verse 5, David said, Then I will say to my soul, don't be discouraged. I will say to my soul, don't be discouraged, don't be disturbed, for I fully expect my Savior God to break through for me. Then I'll, I'll have plenty of reasons to praise Him all over again. Say, I fully expect. Amen. Lift your hand. Say, I fully expect Amen. my Savior God my hero, hero, to break through for me. You see, you have to live breakthrough-minded. You have to live expecting breakthroughs. You have to trust God for breakthrough. Our attitude should be, it, it may seem dark right now, but I know the God of the breakthrough is about to turn it around. My child might be off course, but I know the God of the breakthrough is bringing them back. Business may be slow, but I'm expecting the God of the breakthrough to release a flood of favor, a flood of new clients, a flood of sales, a flood of blessing in my life. See, when it's, when it's difficult, don't get negative because when it seems dark, you are in a prime position to see the God of the breakthrough, the light come bursting in. God give you something to talk about. When I'm tempted to think that something isn't going to work out, I remember the breakthroughs that God has given me in the past. And I say, Lord, you did it once, and I know you can do it again. Amen. One time, there were two blind men that were following Jesus, and they were crying out, Lord, have mercy on us and heal us. Have mercy on us and heal us. And finally, Jesus stopped, and he, and he asked them, he said, do you believe that I'm able to make you see? And they said, yes, we do. And Jesus touched their eyes. And this is what he said to them. In Matthew 9, 29, he said, according to your faith, let it be to you. And if you read the Passion Bible, 
It says it like this. You will have what your faith expects. Say, I will have what my faith expects. So here's the question. What is your faith expecting? Are you expecting to see breakthrough in your life? Because you will have what your faith expects. Don't have a small-minded mentality. Don't have a narrow, limited vision. Some people, they act like they're inconveniencing God. They don't think God wants to bring their dreams to pass, but he does. He said, call on me, and I will show you great and mighty things that you haven't seen before. Amen? Amen. Live breakthrough-minded. Expect breakthroughs in your life. I am expecting to hear testimonies from this church of the breakthroughs that have taken place in your life. I'm expecting to receive messages and say, Pastor Steve, remember when you were at CFC Joburg and you preached about the God of the breakthrough? I got to tell you what God did in my life. I want you to let me know. Send me a message on Facebook. Let the pastors here know the breakthroughs because it gives glory to God and it encourages people when they hear what God did for you, they know he'll do it for me too. Amen. Number four, if you want to see breakthroughs in your life, number four, break free from wrong mindsets. Don't limit God. Think big. Tell your neighbor, think big. Tell them, think bigger. In Isaiah chapter 54, this is what the word of the Lord that came to a woman who was barren. He said, sing barren woman who's never had a baby, fill the air with song, you've never ex- you who have never experienced childbirth, you're ending up with far more children than all those childbearing women. God says so. Clear lots of ground for your tents. Make your tents large. Spread out. Think big. Use plenty of rope. Drive the tent peg, peg, pegs deep. You're going to need lots of elbow room for your growing family. You're going to take over whole nations. You're going to resettle abandoned cities. Don't be afraid. You're not going to be embarrassed. Don't hold back. God says think big. Spread out. You've got to think. You've got to allow in your thinking that God is, 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 because when you think bigger, God can act bigger. Amen. You know, the scripture says in, in Psalm 78 verse 41, talking about the children of Israel, when God delivered them from Egyptian uh, bondage and, and he was taken to the promised land. And he said, I've given you the promised land. Go take possession of it. But they said, no, we can't do it. There's giants in the land. There's walled cities. We, we can't do it. We're like grasshoppers. And the, the scripture says in Psalm 78 verse 41, again and again, they limited God. Notice this, they limited God, preventing him from blessing them. They limited God and prevented him from blessing them. You know, we were just in Cape Town and uh, they rented a van to drive us all around because we had our, our son and, and the grandkids, there were nine of us. And on this van, they had a limiter. The van could not go faster than 100 kilometers an hour. You could flat put your foot down and if you went if you try to go over 100 kilometers an hour, then a message would be sent to the rental company. Now, the van was, pos- was capable of going faster than 100 kilometers an hour, but they put a limit on it. Let me tell you, there's nothing that God can't do in your life, but we can limit him from blessing us with our own thinking, in our own minds. Can you say amen? amen. If you want to see breakthroughs, you've got to break through from wrong mindsets because it is our own thinking that limits God in our lives. You've got to examine your thought life. What are you thinking about? Have you allowed strongholds to convince you that this is as good as it's going to get? I'm never going to go any further. I'm never going to get out of these problems. I should just learn to live with it. Those are, those are wrong mindsets that will keep you from seeing breakthroughs and rising higher. The scripture talks in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. It talks about pulling down strongholds in our mind. It talks about pulling down thoughts that oppose the word of God and bringing every thought into captivity. You see, thoughts can become strongholds in your mind that hold you back. Just like a, 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 a virus can contaminate a computer, a stronghold can contaminate your thinking. One of the best things you can ever learn to do in your own mind is hit the delete button. 
When the devil puts a thought in your mind, it's never going to happen. You're never going to rise higher. You're never going to see breakthrough. Delete and replace it with all things are possible with God. There is nothing that is, that is impossible for him. In fact, in Proverbs 23, excuse me, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, it says, more than anything you guard, protect your mind, for life flows from it. You know, we protect our houses. We lock our door. We have fences. We have walls. Some people even have electrified fencing. They have all kinds of things. We protect our possessions. The most important thing you can ever protect is your own mind. Not allow wrong thoughts in your mind, things that are contrary to the Word of God. Sometimes people think, well, God can't bless me, Pastor Steve. I've made too many mistakes. Delete His mercies on new every morning. I've been forgiven. I have been redeemed. Well, I can never accomplish my dreams. I don't have the connections. I don't have the resources. I don't have the education. Delete me and God are a majority. If God is for me, then who can stand against me? I'm asking you today to break out of a defeated mentality and start believing you're going to rise higher. You're going to overcome every challenge. You are going to overcome every obstacle. You are going to accomplish every dream, every desire God's put in your heart. Believe God for supernatural breakthrough. That's what I want you to get a vision for because it starts on the inside. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Number five. Declare breakthrough in your life. The scripture says in Job twenty two twenty eight, you will also declare a thing and it shall be established for you so light will shine on your ways. The light will come bursting in. Remember what David said? We read it just a few minutes ago in Psalm 43. David said, then I will say to my soul, I will say to my soul, don't be discouraged, don't be disturbed, for I fully expect my Savior God to break through for me. Sometimes you've got to look in the mirror and you've got to say, Steve, you've got to talk to your soul. Don't be discouraged. Don't be disturbed. I'm expecting my Savior God, He's going to break through for me. I'm expecting to see breakthroughs in my life. You've got to declare it. Speak breakthrough over your life. Whatever you're facing today, say it with me now. Say, the God of the breakthrough is turning this around for me. Say, the God of the breakthrough is visiting my house in the name of Jesus. Say, I'm going to see breakthroughs this year. Number six. Now, listen, I'm giving you six hours of teaching in 30 minutes, okay? I'm giving you the highlights here. Number six. If you want to see breakthroughs, you've got to praise God before you see the breakthrough. Anybody can praise God after they see the breakthrough, but it, you, it takes faith to praise God before you see the breakthrough. And praise is what brings the breakthrough. We know the story in Second Chronicles with King Jehoshaphat. They were in an impossible situation. They had been surrounded, the tribe of Judah, by three nations, three, three nations that joined their armies and came to annihilate the tribe of Judah. They had no chance. But what did they do? In 2 Chronicles 20, verse 19, it says, Then the Levites stood up to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud shout. A very loud shout. The message translation says, they praise God at the top of their lungs. Now, I know CFC. You know how to praise God with a very loud shout. Amen. Then they put the singers and the musicians at the front of the army and they marched into battle singing praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. And the scripture says in verse 22, the very moment they begin to, begin, begin to sing and they begin to give praise, the Lord caused the armies of Ammon, Moab, Mount Sur to start fighting amongst themselves and they destroyed each other. The message Bible says as soon as they started shouting and praising, as soon as they started shouting and praising, their praise is what brought the breakthrough. You see it again with Joshua and with the walls of Jericho, the first city that they took of the promised land. It says in verse 20, Joshua 6, 20, they shouted as loud as they could and suddenly the walls of Jericho collapsed and the Israelites charged straight in the town and they captured it. We've been to Jericho. I've been to those, 
those ruins. The walls of Jericho fell straight down into the ground. And they just walked over and took the promised land. It happened as they shouted and God gave, gave, God gave, gave God praise. In Psalm 105, verse 43, it says, So God brought out his chosen ones with singing and with a joyful shout they were set free. In Proverbs 29, verse 6, the wicked always have a trap laid for others, but the lovers of God escape as they sing and shout in joyous triumph. In Psalm 32, verse 7, Lord, you are my secret hiding place, protecting me from these troubles, surrounding me with songs of gladness. Your joyous shouts of rescue release my breakthrough. Why don't you take 10 seconds? Give God a great shout of praise right now. Give him praise like you already got the breakthrough. Give him a shout of praise right now. Praise God for breakthrough in your life. Amen. I determined, I made a determination. David said every day of my life, I will praise you. First thing I do when I open my eyes, I say, Father, I praise you. Jesus, I praise you. I worship you, O oh God. First thing that comes out of my mouth, this is the day the Lord has made, and I will rejoice, and I will be glad in it. Amen? And number seven, if you want to see breakthroughs in your life, don't give up. Don't give up. If you will stay in faith, no matter how things may look, the God of the breakthrough will break through for you. Don't ever give up on the God of the breakthrough. Live breakthrough-minded like David. David said in Psalm 27, verse 13, I had fainted unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait on the Lord, I say. Now, when David said, I would have fainted unless I had believed, what he's saying is, I would have given up. I would have quit unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of God. Wait on the Lord. And in the New Living Translation, it says it like this, yet I am confident. I will see the Lord's goodness while I wait here in the land of the, of the living. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. The, the Living Bible says, I am expecting the Lord to rescue me again. So that once again, I'll see his goodness to me here in the land of the living. Don't be impatient. Wait for the Lord and he will come and save you. The message Bible says, I'm sure now I'll see God's goodness in the exuberant earth. Stay with God. Take heart. Don't quit. And finally, the message Bible. Remember, this is David. David said, here's what I've learned through it all. Here's what I've learned through it all. I can say the same thing. 44 years of serving the Lord, here's what I've learned through it all. Don't give up. Don't give up. Tell your neighbor, don't give up. Don't be impatient. Be entwined as one with the Lord. Be brave and courageous and never lose hope. Yes, keep on waiting. He will not disappoint you. See, David learned when it looks dark, in times of great pressure, David learned not to give up. You know, the enemy comes to all of us with thoughts and tries to get us to give up, tries to get us to quit. But I found out the devil is a liar. And when he tells me there's no way, I believe the opposite of him because Jesus is the way. He is the way maker. And if the enemy is telling you there's no way, that's an indication that your breakthrough is on the way and the enemy is trying to get you to quit. Don't give up, man. It could be tomorrow. It could be the next day. If I, I, I have an attitude. I'm expecting breakthrough tomorrow morning. And if I wake up tomorrow morning and there's no breakthrough, well, now I'm expecting it this afternoon. And if it doesn't happen this afternoon, well, then I'm expecting it tonight. And if it doesn't happen tonight, then I'm expecting it tomorrow. And if it doesn't happen tomorrow, I'm expecting it next week. And if it doesn't happen next week, I'm expecting it next month. Don't ever give up on the God of the breakthrough. Can you say amen, somebody? <laughs> Hebrews 10, 35 says, Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. Let me tell you, your faith brings you great reward. Don't cast away your faith. Another word for confidence is faith. Don't cast away your faith. No matter how dark it looks, don't ever give up on the God of the breakthrough. Live breakthrough-minded. Declare it over your life. Trust God for it. Give God praise for it. Don't ever give up. And I'm telling you right now, when, 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 when it's suddenly, when you may not even, may not even, just when you may not be expecting it, suddenly, out of the blue, there comes the breakthrough. I'm going to share with you tonight. Um, tonight, I'm going to focus particularly on financial breakthrough. 
I'm going to share with you the amazing breakthrough. My son and his daughter, uh, my son and his wife, my daughter-in-law, they just had an f- amazing breakthrough. They just, they just bought a house, $850,000. It was a miracle. I, I mean, I, I, I didn't see how it was going to happen, but God came through. And I'm going to share with you tonight how you can see financial breakthrough in your house, in your, in your life. Is there anyone here that's trusting God to own your own home? You want to own your own home? Wave your hand up. Wave your hand at me. Let me tell you right now, get ready. Tonight, I'm going to share with you how you can see financial breakthroughs in your life. Amen? Lift your hands up. I want to pray for you. Father, I pray right now for every single person in this room, every person watching this online. Father, I pray the God of the breakthrough, that you would visit their house. I speak breakthrough over your life. I release breakthrough in your finances, in your health, in your family, in your business, in your ministry. Lord, I thank you for visiting their house with breakthroughs this year in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we give you alone the praise, the glory, and all the honor. And everybody shout it out, amen. Give God another shout of praise. Come on, one more time. Give Him a shout of praise at the top of your lungs. Praise you, Lord. Thank you for breakthroughs in my life. How many of you, your faith's been stirred up a little bit today? Wave your hand at me. How many of you go out of here? Say the, say the God of the breakthrough is going to visit my house. Tell your neighbor, the God of the breakthrough is about to visit my house. I'm about to see amazing breakthroughs in my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. I can't wait to hear the testimonies. I can't wait to hear the testimonies of what the Lord is going to do. Because remember, God is not a respecter of persons. What He'll do for one, He'll do for another. What God is a respecter of is faith. Faith is what releases breakthroughs in your life. Amen. Bow your head for a moment. The greatest, bow your head for a moment. Close your eyes. The greatest breakthrough that you can ever experience is the day you receive Jesus into your life. That happened to me at this church 44 years ago. My whole life changed. My family changed. It affected my children, my grandchildren. And if you're here this morning and you say, Paul, Sister Steve, you know, I'm really not sure where I stand with God today. I'm not sure if all is is well with me and the Lord. Let me ask you this question. If you were to die today, can you say that you know for sure that you would go to heaven? You have no doubt about it. Or would you have to be honest? Say, Pastor Steve, if I died today, I hope I'd go to heaven. I do believe in God. I'm a member of such and such a church. But I can't say that I know for sure that I would go to heaven. Let me tell you the good news. You can know for certain. You can walk out of here today knowing for sure that when you die, heaven is where you're going to spend eternity. Heaven is a real place. Hell is a real place. And I want to pray for you. I'm not going to embarrass anybody. So while heads are bowed, eyes are closed, this is between you and God. You know right now your, your heart is beating in your chest. Because Jesus said, I stand at the, at the door and I'm knocking. God is knocking on your door right now. He's got a wonderful plan for your life. Not only can you live an amazing life on this earth, but when you know Jesus, when you leave this earth, that's a, that's, we have eternity in a place called heaven. And I want to pray for you today. If you said, Pastor Steve, include me. Pray for me. In that prayer, you're going to pray. Pray for me too. I want to make sure that all is right with me and God. If you would say, Pastor Steve, pray for me. I want to be sure that all is well with me and the Lord. I want to be sure when I die, I want to go to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. If that's you, I want you right now to just slip your hand up. Just raise your hand up high. I'm looking for hands. Hands are being raised all over the church. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I see your hand at the back there. God bless you. Just lift it up high. Wave it at me. Pray for me too, Pastor Steve. Maybe you're here this morning. And you say, Pastor Steve, I used to know the Lord. I used to walk with Him. But I've drifted away. And today, I want to rededicate my life to Him. If you want to make a rededication, lift your hand also. I want to pray for you too. Lift it up high. Wave it at me right now. Thank you, Lord. Now, if you, 
Now, if you lifted your hand, I want you please say this prayer with me. In fact, can we all say this prayer together? The Bible tells us in Romans 10 in verse 9, if you will believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, and if you will confess with your mouth that He is Lord, you will be saved. I did that 44 years ago. I wasn't raised in church. I wasn't religious. I was a sinner like everybody else. But I confessed Jesus to be Lord of my life. And gosh, everything changed in my life. And I want you to know today is a brand new beginning for you. I want everyone to say this prayer together. Say this. Say, dear God. Everybody say, dear God. I thank you that you love me so much that you sent your son Jesus to come to this earth for me to die on a cross for me to give his life for me I believe Jesus you are alive you've been raised from the dead and I confess Jesus you are now Lord of my life I surrender my life to you come into my heart forgive me of my sins save me Lord from today, I will follow you, Jesus. You are Lord of my life. I'll do what your Bible says. And I thank you that I have now been saved. I am born again. I'm a child of God. God, you are my very own Father. Heaven is now my home. And my name is written down in that book of life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Give them a big round of applause. Give God praise. All the angels rejoice when one person comes to Jesus. God bless you. We love you. Hope you'll be able to come back tonight. We'll talk about the God of the breakthrough who wants to visit your house with financial breakthrough tonight. God bless you. We love you, everybody. We'll see you tonight. Thank you, Dr. Steve. Can we give the Lord praise for everything He's done this morning? Thank you, Dr. Steve. Remember to be here tonight. It's going to be awesome. Hey, to those of you who gave your hearts to the Lord, we're encouraging you to take your next step. And that is by going with the person that's rested their hand on your shoulder. And as you go, we're going to make the biggest noise we can. Christian Family Church, can we do that as they go? Come on. So many people joining the family of God this morning. Come on, they're still going. Let's keep clapping. Heaven is rejoicing and so can we. What a great decision. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, at this point in time, I'm going to hand over to the venue hosts. If you Thank you, Clive. Wow, family, what a great message from Dr. Steve. Thank you, Dr. Steve, for blessing us with an encouraging message. And I'm sure, family of God, we can apply it daily in our lives. My name is Pastor Bruce, your online pastor, and it's great to be with you this morning. And I believe that because of the word that was preached, and the altar call that was given. There are people, family of God, in our midst that have made a quality decision. It is the best decision anybody could ever make because it has eternity at stake. If that's you, family of God, we want to implore you to come alongside us as a ministry. You can't do this alone. So why don't you reach out to us? Why don't you connect with us? Send the word SAVED to 4991. Alternatively, Go to our website, click on the big yellow button that says next steps. There's a team of people waiting to engage with you in the days to come. We look forward to your journey ahead. This journey will be exciting and I can tell you now, it will be promising in the same way. Family of God, we love you already. Here at Christian Family Church, we love doing next steps. And the best way we can do this is through our Growth Track program. Our Growth Track program is designed to help you know your purpose in the local church. If that's you, if you want to get connected, if you want to belong to the local church, why don't you join our Growth Track team right now? There's an email address right here at the bottom of the screen. Send them an email. Connect with them. Let them know that you are interested. And we believe that God will order your footsteps as you go along. Right after this morning's service, and our second morning service is step number two in our four-step process. This step is exciting. Why? 
because you get to know your personality assessment. You get to know your gift profile, your disc profile that will help you and shape you so that you can live out your full purpose in the local church. Family of God, we can't wait for you to come alongside us and do the growth track journey. Now, family of God, here at Christian Family Church, the best way we can really pastor you better is if you connect with us. Why don't you check in? If it's a trouble for you, download our Church Center app. Get on the app. It's easy. It's simple. And if you're doing online church, be sure to click on the online tab. That's critically important for us so that we can pastor you better. I encourage you to do that every time you join us, family, so that we know that you are watching with us and you're enjoying the experience with us here at Christian Family Church. I want to pray with you, but before I do that, I want to encourage you to join us every single morning. We do this live on Facebook at 8 o'clock. We pray for you. Yes, we pray for you and your needs. We add our faith to your faith and we elevate the name of Jesus. Join us every single morning on Facebook Live at 8 o'clock. We look forward to seeing you there. I want to pray with you this morning as you go into your Sunday and enjoy your time with your family. Father, as I stretch out my hands to your people, thank you, Lord, for meeting them at their point of contact. Father, we know that you always go ahead of us. You prepare the way, Father. Your word guides our footsteps. It's a lamp unto our feet, Father. Today, Father, as we embrace that, as we put our trust in you, Father, we know that you will become all that we need for every situation and every moment in our life, Father. Lord, we put our trust in you and we glorify your name up front in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Family, look forward to seeing you back here at 5 p.m. where Dr. Steve is going to encourage us with another great word that will impact your lives in the days to come in Jesus' name, right? Look forward to seeing you there, family. We love you already.